Those who said to me, Ashley, more than half of my youths are under the age of 15. You're unemployed, you're leaving, and you're going out. I want to bring them back. And the only way I can bring them back is to give them a reason. And he tried. I could remember painfully. Painfully, I say, because he too was in pain that Sunday of June 4th when the man flew from Canada to Miami to Puerto Rico to St. Croix just to be there with us. And he said on the morning of the 5th, Ashley, I hear that my people are murmuring and grumbling because I'm away, but this is the only way I know to make a difference. The man said he had to go out and sell Dominica. He had to go out and he couldn't do it here and he hoped that in time. The man hoped that in time he could bring home the fruits of his efforts. And I beg you earnestly, Prime Minister Charles, please make sure that the fruits of the man's labor does not fall in hollow ground. We must, we must, we must keep the dream and the vision of this man alive. It's incumbent upon his party, it's incumbent upon the other parties to remember what Rosie truly believes, and that is, in unity, there is strength, and Dominica needs strength. Let me say, in closing, that the pain of a lost friend can never really be erased. And although I stand here and wonder why, as a Christian I know from my Lord's prayer it's God's will, and therefore I accept it grudgingly. But it's painful. It's painful. My heart goes out to the Douglas family in particular and all the Dominicans in general, and I ask God speedy recovery from your pain and your challenge to meet the past that he has left and the future that you must build. I thank you. Well, you know your brother was on the world stage and you know that he made friends for us all over the world, didn't you? So at this point in time, I will call Dr. Chamin Belushi, who also is the executive director of the National Liberation Movement, World Mataba, in Libya, who was a very good friend of our Prime Minister and who's here this evening. Welcome the former Prime Minister of Mataba and the Executive Director, former Prime Minister of Malta, the Executive Director of Mataba. constant 
and loyal participant in the activities of the world Mataba. He was in the front line of the struggle against colonialism and imperialism. He was in the front line of the struggle for freedom everywhere throughout the world. Especially he was in the front line of the struggle for the black Africa and the, the Caribbean and the ethnic group in the Americas. In every struggle, he was active and dynamic. And it is uh, now that he has recently, up to one and a half months ago, made his contribution to the development of the world of Mataba in the present circumstances facing the world, the threat which the world has through the unfettered, unruly new system of globalization which preys upon the weak, the defenseless, and the poor. And he was uh, very active in the last meeting of the world of Mataba in the great Jamaharia to promote the formation of a new world order where the new economic system of globalization would be honored in favor of the weak, of the poor, so that the gap which is widening between the rich and the poor is stopped. So that the gap which is widening between the weak and the strong is stopped. So that developing peoples, especially countries of the third world, would get a fairer deal, a just deal in the world, where the countries of the developing world would have the safeguards that they need for their local industry, for their local products, for the attracting investments to be able to develop. And he, in the last meeting of the world, Mataba, fought for the promotion of this new concept of a new world order based on peace, solidarity, and justice to all and freedom to all. The world Mataba is grateful for the efforts he made and the struggle which he conducted. And the world Mataba is also honored to have had amongst its members so big a personality as Rosie Douglas to inspire the other movement in the world Metaba. And although physically he is no longer with us, I am sure that his memory will always be a shining star which will show the path we have to follow in the continuation of the struggle to which he devoted so much of his energy and to which 
he devoted his own life. Long grim the memory of our brother Rosie. However, 
I need to cut you down. The bamboo could not understand why, but being as humble as he was, and ever ready for any given situation, the bamboo surrendered. However, that was not the end of bamboo. In death, there was victory. Guess what? He, he was cut down and was cut open right down to the middle and placed at strategic places at the four corners of this beautiful floral garden. And his body was used as spouts spouts to transport water to all the other plants in the garden so that they could survive and blossom. The strongest tree in this beautiful floral garden was taken so that the water his body transported to the other plants would ensure their survival. And so, the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of the constituents of Casabros, Good Hope, Santa Vez, Pinis Sufrier, I extend sincere condolences to the Douglas family. And on behalf of my family, my very supportive husband and myself, I also wish to extend sincere condolences. May God's hopeful promises bring comfort to our soul and the peace to our hearts. Eternal life grant unto him, O Lord, and may the soul of Honorable Roosevelt, Rosie Bernard Douglas, rest in perfect peace. I thank you. Dear people of Portsmouth, Rosie's town, Rosie's people. Rosie Douglas was one of my closest, dearest, and most beloved friends for the last 10 years and more. Rosie was always talking about the people of Portsmouth. I never, I never in my worst nightmares imagined that the first time I would be here was for, would be for an occasion like this. As people have said, Rosie was a world historic figure. He was one of the greatest politicians in the world. He was one of the greatest men in the world. Whatever part of the world you went to, whatever part of the world you went to, people loved Rosie, and I mean they really loved Rosie. As our brother from Barbados said, we all thought of Rosie as our Rosie. We knew he was your Rosie, but we'd like to think he was our Rosie too. And Rosie, whenever he passed through London and we talked, or whenever we talked, because Rosie was a, a world famous political leader and one of the greatest politicians that the 20th century produced in any country of the world, a real giant, of course Rosie wanted to talk and to discuss about everything that was happening all around the world. And he wanted to know what he could do to help poor people, oppressed people, and downtrodden people. Because Rosie saw the suffering of each and every single human being in the world as his suffering. And if there was a muscle in his body that he could strain to help them, he would do so. But, but Rosie also remembered that he was above all a Dominican and he was someone from Portsmouth. And I want you to know that whenever, wherever I found Rosie, he was talking about the world, but he always brought it back to this country and this town to see what he could do to bring things uh, to this people, to this town and this country. He had a vision that the people of Portsmouth and the people of Dominica should be second to none in the world. You will be second to none in the world because we know that nobody can replace Rosie, but look at us all here tonight, you are all Rosie. Whatever you do in the future, think, is this what Rosie would have wanted us to do? And if the answer is yes, then do it. Long live Rosie Douglas, long live Faulkner, long live Dominica, thank you. Ambassador Large from Dominica, his name is Scott Carruthers. Scott Carruthers cannot be here tonight because he is attending a very high-level conference in Cairo, Egypt. 
and will be representing Dominico at that conference. Rosie was a great statesman, and I have to tell you, I'm one of the few people who saw Rosie in action dealing with ambassadors and diplomats throughout the world. He was great. Let me tell you, he was great. I have a message, and this message is written by Scott Carruthers, that he asked me to deliver to you tonight. And the message is this. Our skin color was different, and our hair color was different, his eyes were deep brown, while mine are bright blue. Yet despite those apparent outward differences, I came to learn that our souls were united in the colorless brilliance of light. And I am a better person for having basked in the reflection of his. I won't speak about the personal loss in losing Rosie Douglas. I know nobody can feel that more strongly than you. But I worked for 10 years with Rosie Douglas. I traveled with him to Africa. I first met him in Africa. I traveled with him throughout Europe in the United States. And I'm so impressed when I think, when I visit this small town of Portsmouth and this tiny island country of Dominica, that its Prime Minister was a man whom I saw at international conferences, an international conference in Rome two years ago, where there were seven European Prime Ministers. I saw him in Libya six weeks ago with a conference with ten African heads of state. And your Prime Minister was moving among the leaders of the world. I saw him two weeks ago. I saw him only two weeks ago, I was with him when he met Tony Blair. It's not everyone that the Prime Minister of Britain turns around and says, Oh, hello, Rosie. And so did all the cabinet members to whom he met in Britain two weeks ago. He made instant friendships with everyone he met. He didn't have to have a permanent staff in London. He used to turn up, he used to phone us through in the early hours of the mo morning. See who was available. He'd inspire people to work with him, and the next day we'd all be working together. That's the kind of man, the inspirational man your Prime Minister was. His ideal was for Dominica, a small country, to participate in really great events in the world, in the emergence and the re-emergence of Africa on the world stage, in the re-emergence of the African diaspora around the world. His ideal was for the ordinary man to walk proud. That is the real ideal of a great man, a great man who inspires ordinary people like the rest of us to walk proud. He did not behave like a great man. Two weeks ago when he was working with us in Britain, I said to him, Rosie, you're a Prime Minister now. We're getting on a train. You must get a first-class ticket. He said, no, I'm going second class. I said, when we get down to Brighton for the conference, I must book you into the Grand Hotel. This is protocol. You are Prime Minister. He said, no, book me into a small hotel. <laughs> Rosie was a man of peace. He was a man of the people. He never disguised the fact he preferred the way of life of the people. And we are, we are so grateful in our part of the world that he was loyal to all issues of peace, not only in Africa, but in Ireland. This was one of the great causes to which he was dedicated, peace throughout the world. When President Kennedy died, when Princess Diana died, there's a saying that everyone remembers where they were. Everyone starts remembering their thoughts of that. Last night when I was in Roseau, I saw a sight that some people might have thought a bit strange. There were people, a thousand people, coming out of the church from the memorial service for Rosie, condoling each other, all of them stricken with sadness. And yet here and there, at every few moments, you would see a group of people burst out in laughter when they re remembered Rosie, his sense of humor, even when you're mourning him, you cannot forget his sense of fun, his sense of hope that inspired us all so greatly. 
So in remembering Rosie Douglas, let us pledge to continue his cause. Let us turn our grief into determination to continue the cause he opened up. Let us build a better world, a better world of peace, of friendship and love. A world, a fitting memorial for the Prime Minister that you had for so short a time and that you deserved for such a long time. So let's keep that picture of Rosie smiling. Let's keep it laughing. Let's keep his voice in our minds as we go forward because the struggle continues. I'd like to say how happy I was when I first heard the voice of your Prime Minister last night when he, at the memorial service, called upon you all to continue along the road opened up by Rosie Douglas. And I was so pleased to hear that again tonight. And it is so important that we all, not only you in Dominica, but all Dominica's friends around the world, rally around your new Prime Minister, Mr. Pierre Charles, and the rest of the Dominican government. Thank you. 